Always great catching up with my next guest, Drakkar Close, who's back in action February 20th, going to be taking on Jai Herbert at UFC Fight Night. Uh, Drakkar, how's it going, man? It's going good. Thank you for having me. Of course, man. We've been doing these for a while, since the RFA days, just so people know we've been doing this a while. Um, great to see you back. I uh, I was checking out your Instagram. Looked like you had a good holiday, you, Courtney, and, and your son. Uh, how was everything? Uh, everything was good. Um, you know, we got to have a little fun, uh, you know, for holidays. But now it's, uh, you know, I'm starting to get in fight mode and prepare to go to war. Absolutely. And and I believe when you step into the cage, it'll be almost close to a year since your last fight. Was that by design? Did you want that much time off or are you hoping to get in there a little bit sooner? No, actually, I uh, had a, you know, an injury, you know, occurred, you know, kind of during the fight and I had to get surgery. So kind of kind of sucks, man. This game, you know, it's a lot of ups and downs. Uh, hopefully, you know, after this fight, I can stay healthy and uh, get another fight instead That's of waiting a whole, a whole year and you know yeah but good on you though for recognizing that you needed the time off a lot of guys might have wanted to step back in there as soon as possible at least you kind of recognize like look got to make sure this is good got to got to you know be ready to go right you can't just step in if uh, you're not you're not 100 healthy so i think that's good um you had a really tough fight in your last one against darius who's you know really been making waves in that division what did you learn the most from that fight because uh, again you're fighting nothing but top competition in that lightweight division um you know i think uh that fight it kind of opened up my eyes you know um I never wanted to be on someone's highlight. I never wanted to be knocked out, knocked out, and both of it both happened in you know that fight. Um, but it was it was like for me it was my fight to lose. You know going in there, I knew I was gonna rock him, um, and you know I, I rocked him a little, and and in my head I'm like, I gotta finish this. I see Michael Irvin in the crowd. I see Iron Man. I'm like, oh, I'm about to put a show on for all these guys and. Uh, you know, my game plan kind of just went out out the window, but I, re I respect Darius a lot. You know, he's a, uh, you know, I, I chatted up with him since since the fight, and uh, he's he's a really good dude, and uh, I respect him. Good stuff. Uh, good opponent here, and uh, Jai Herbert. Uh, obviously, you know, he's uh, coming off a pretty decent uh, performance in his last fight. How do you feel like you match up against him in this one? Uh, I think this is a this is a good fight for me. Um, you know, he's a striker. Uh, he's he's not too much of a ground. Uh, you know, I have I've never went for a submission attempt ever, so maybe uh, this fight I try to go for a submission attempt. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, yeah, some of the new things you've been working on. Now, I was looking on Instagram. I was trying to figure out training. So I've got uh, Golden Era Muay Thai, Dan's Gym. I know you've been doing some strength training as well. I didn't see it fight ready. Are you not with them anymore, or is that just uh, you're trying out some different stuff, or what, what's what's sort of the latest on your camp? No, I'm uh, no longer at fight ready. You know. Uh... The person I went over there to follow up, I found out he's a fraud. So um, I got to do do what's best for me. And uh, I've been going over to Tim Welch, um, uh, to Quinos, uh, Golden Air. So I've just been traveling all around and just getting new looks, looks and learning. Um, you know, it's when you when you stay at a gym for you know a long time, you kind of just do the same things over and over, and you don't learn anything. But now it's I'm traveling, you know, and learning new things. Like I don't mind driving an hour to go train somewhere because I know it's going to be good work for me. Absolutely. So. Yeah, no, I mean, you got to do what's best for you, right? It's kind of a selfish sport that way. You got to customize things how you want. And I like how you're doing the different cross training to get different looks. And I also saw you're training with Michael Johnson. I know he was there for a bit. How did that come together? What what brought him out to Arizona? Uh, I guess he he moved out here. Oh, did he really? Oh, cool. Okay. He's living out here, and um, you know, and uh, he hit me up, and cause he he hit up Tequino to train over with Tequino, and then you know we we linked up, and now we're like sparring together. He's helping me get ready. I'm helping him get ready for his fight. Uh, he's a he's a really good uh really good guy. Uh, I like having him out here, um, picking his brain, and you know just. He's a veteran in this sport and, you know, he's fought some of the best. So That's the thing. You know, like you look at his record and you're like, oh, maybe not a great record. But look who he's fought. He's got a win over Dustin Poirier. People forget that. He's the only guy at 155 to knock out Dustin Poirier. Like, you don't just do that for, for nothing, right? So it must be cool to get to work with him because he's been in there with some of the best. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's very knowledgeable and, uh, you know, just pick, picking people's brains and learning new things. Uh, if, if you're not evolving with this sport, you're going to get left behind. 
And he's fighting Guida, right? I think that's the next fight for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how's that? Because he's also getting ready, right? I mean, you guys are both kind of getting uh, get, getting into it at the same time in terms of a fight. I know for a lot of fighters, that helps each other when you have both a fight, you know, coming up. Yeah, yeah. Um, from the first day, like his improvements, he's he's got a lot better. I, I feel I feel bad for for Clay because uh, he's he's looking really good right now. Good to hear. Awesome. Uh, who else you got to work with? You mentioned going over to work. I saw you working with O'Malley a bit. Who, by the way, I can't believe O'Malley's like he's so big for that weight class. Like just seeing him stand next to you, you're like two weight classes above. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, who, who, who else? Who uh, else have you had a chance to work with in terms of bodies in the gym? Uh, Tank, um, t- um, Tim Welch. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other guys. Nick Chastain, uh, Damian. Put, you put me on the spot. To name no worries, no worries. No, it's tough because I know it's funny. Like sometimes I'll ask a fighter who they're training with. They're like, "Yeah, I train with Nick and whoever." Because like a lot of times when you train with guys, you don't you're not like asking them their last name, right? So it's yeah, just kind of yeah, like yeah. you're just working with it. But that, I guess the thing that we've kind of highlighted here is a lot of variety, which is good, and I think that's awesome heading into a fight like this. Uh, the weight cut, I imagine, is going well. You've had some notice for this fight by the looks of it. Yeah, man. Uh, I think this one might be a little tougher. I kind of you know being out that long with that injury and. Uh, you know, I kind of blew up. Uh, I and you like to eat, man. I do follow your Instagram. I know you and Courtney definitely uh, enjoy some good. Arizona's got some good food, man. Like I've been out to Scottsdale and some of the other spots. They they got they they know what's going on there. So yeah, I'm like uh, when I started cutting my weight, I'm cutting weight. I was 207. Oh wow. Okay, gotcha. So uh, now I'm down to 180. So there you go. So it's I'll a process. We got some time. We got some time. Yeah. But it's not too bad. I, I grew up wrestling. You know what I mean. You know how how wrestlers do it. They they can get that weight off. So absolutely. Um, who's going to be in your corner for this fight? Uh, I'm going to have Courtney, uh, my buddy Brett, and my striking coach Damian. Awesome. Was Cor- Courtney wasn't in your corner last time, was she? Or I was trying to remember. Uh, no, she, she's never been in my corner. But uh, this time I'm a you know I'm gonna have her in there. Good stuff. I think that's she, cool. She might, say some, she might say some things to me to get me pissed off. Man. There you go. Yeah, she, who knows Who knows you better than anyone than, than Courtney, right? That's good. Hey, it works for Sam Alvey, right? His wife's always in his corner, so uh, yeah. it's, it's one of those things to make note of. Uh, how's this fight playing out in the 20th? You feel like you're going to get your hand raised, but how do you see it unfolding? Uh, I'm going to get a submission. I'm, uh, I always say, like, oh, I'm going to knock someone out, but, you know, I've never went for a submission attempt. Um, so... I think this is the first time I'm a. I'm gonna try to keep it 100. percent You know, first submission. Where does a win put you? Because I mentioned, you know, you're fighting really good guys. You got a good record in, in in the weight class. Like a finish here, especially, especially if you get the submission, like you're saying. Where do you think that puts you back in in the grand scheme of things? Uh, to be honest, man, like you know, this I had a lot of time just to think, man. It's and it's it feels like. I'm never going to be able to get a t- uh, shot at the title, you know. The UFC, they know who they want to be a champion. They're going to push these people. And for me, it's like, man, I'm just – I'm to the point now, I just want to go make money. Like, give me the easiest guys. I don't care because it's like – like, uh, Oliver, why is he still fighting? He should be fighting for a belt, you know, or I agree. Close. And it's like – if, if you're not marketable or something, they're not going to push you. You're never going to fight for the belt. So why try to take all these tough fights? Just just make money. You know what I mean? It's, I don't know, but if you know if they, if they were going to put my name like, oh, you win these two fights, you're going to fight for the belt, then I would care a little more. But it just... I don't know, I've just been thinking a lot more. And it's, no, it's, it's a, business, a business, right? No, and I, I agree with you, by the way. Like, if we're going off merit, like, you should have, like, an Oliveira fighting for the title. You should have, like, I mean, there's other guys that have been passed over, too. I, I completely get it as well from that perspective. Uh, kind of on that note, like, how many more fights do you have in your deal? I, I can't remember how many you you have left. Uh, I think uh, Darius was my first fight of my new deal. So I'm just going to, you know, just, just win it out and, you know, just keep winning and just play it by ear, you know what I mean? Because... It just sucks, you know. We we work so hard, and sometimes it's not it's not on us. It's you know it's on the UFC, and they they want champ. So, do you, do you kind of look at someone like Anthony Pettis, for example, who could have gone back with the UFC, but he's like, you know what, I'm gonna go to PFL and I can win a million bucks. Is that is that kind of cross your mind at all? Just seeing some of the money that's out there. It does, it does, you know, because you know I was talking with my buddy. It was like like these promotions they want to pay you the least. And then the coaches want to take the most. So it's like, 
the fighters are always getting screwed. Mm -hmm. So it's like, man, we, we got to start. We got to stick up for each other and, you know, try to make as much money as you can because we can't fight forever. Absolutely. And before we go on a lighter note, how's how's little Kingston doing, man? I've been trying to follow on Instagram. He's getting how old is he now? Is he three? I was trying to remember. Uh, he's two and a half. Two and a half. He's getting there because he's not that much younger than my son. My son turned three yeah. in September. So there doing he is. Good. That's good. <laughs> Yeah. So what's what's he into right now? Do you think he's going to get into martial arts, or what do you, what do you think? Or you just get him into any sport? Uh, any sport. Like he he loves cars. Oh, cool. Okay. And I'm like, man, I don't make enough money to you know, you got to have money to uh, to be a, a driver or something like that. So good stuff. Well, I'll say I'll say goodbye to the both of you here, uh, Drakkar. Always a pleasure, man. Just remind people where they can find you on social media, and if you got any sponsors or shoutouts, I'll give you the last word. Uh, you can find me at Drakkar Close. Uh, all platforms. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to, you know, Tim Welch, BJJ, uh, Soul Fighters, Taquinos Gym, uh, Golden Air, Blue Star, um, all my training partners, um, Joe, Active Health, uh, for taking care of me, and you know, and just tune in uh, February twentieth. I'm gonna get the job done.